Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at the peculiar topic of how to define a fractional derivative for a power of x. Now, in your calculus courses, you know how to find a first derivative, a second derivative, a third derivative, any order of a derivative where that order is a positive integer. But what about a half derivative? Well, that's what we're gonna to get to in this video. Now, the basic idea, which I'm gonna give away right now, is we're gonna basically replace factorials with gamma function values. So you'll definitely wanna be familiar with the gamma function, which we have defined up here, and I have a whole video on that linked down below. So definitely check that out first before going through this video. All right, now, if you are comfortable with the gamma function, let's go ahead and get to some basic integer derivatives of, let's say, a basic power x to the sixth. And we'll uh, kind of see a pattern here that we'll be able to very easily generalize. All right, so let's first start with these derivatives of x to the sixth, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, so on and so on. Now notice what we're getting here. As you keep differentiating, you get more factors. And those factors down here in this fourth derivative, six times five times four times three, look almost like six factorial. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write these coefficients of these nth derivatives as factorial values. So let's start with the first one. I'm gonna think of six as basically six factorial, and I'm gonna divide by five factorial. So take six factorial, divide by five factorial, you'll be left with six. So let's write that as six factorial, divided by five factorial. All right, and that's multiplying x to the fifth from the power rule. The power went down by one. All right, here we can probably see the pattern. We have six times five. We can think of that as six factorial divided by four factorial. And that's multiplying x to the fourth. Notice here we have six factorial in the numerator and in the denominator a factorial that matches the new power after applying the power rule. So here, six times five times four, that's gonna be six factorial divided by three factorial. So let's write that as six factorial divided by three factorial, x cubed. And let's go one more here. Six times five times four times three is six factorial divided by two factorial. All right, now from this column of how we're writing the derivatives with the coefficients expressed as factorials, we can now get a nice general formula for what we'll call the kth derivative of x to the n. Here, both n and k, we're gonna take them to be positive integers just to make this nice and easy. And it seems like the order of our derivative, we subtract that from n and that goes in the denominator and we have the a power n factorial in the numerator of those coefficients. So if we write this as a generalized formula, it looks like we should have n factorial, and that's your power of x here, so that's the six factorials and all those numerators. And then in the denominator, we basically have our power here, six, and then minus the order of the derivative that we're calculating. And we're gonna call that order right now k, so we'll write that denominator as n minus k factorial. And if we're differentiating x to the n k times, we get x to the n minus k. All right, and this is our formula for the kth derivative of x to the n, where both k and n are positive integers. Now we're gonna be able to very easily generalize this with the main idea we're gonna replace factorials with gamma function values. So let's take a look at both the factorials we have here. We have n factorial and n minus k factorial, and we're basically just going to go ahead and apply this property of the gamma function. n factorial, we can write that as the gamma function of that integer n plus one. All right, so if we take a look at the two factorials here, we're gonna think of the numerator n factorial as the gamma function 
of n plus 1. And then this factorial, n minus k factorial, we're basically just going to replace there, instead of having n everywhere, we're going to replace it with n minus k. So we'll get the gamma function of n minus k plus 1. All right, so here is our formula. We're going to replace these factorials with gamma function values, but right now, both n and k are still positive integers. So what we're going to do is replace pretty much everywhere in this formula where there's k, the order of the derivative, we're going to replace it with a different symbol. We're going to call it alpha. And we're going to take that to be a real number instead of an integer. And for right now, we'll just keep it to being between 0 and 1. So instead of having a positive integer for the order of our derivative, it was the uh, kth derivative over here. Now we're going to be taking the alpha derivative, where alpha is between 0 and 1, so now a fraction. All right, so just replace that up here. And it looks like we get our formula here for a fractional derivative of order alpha, where alpha is between 0 and 1, a real number. And we just need to replace pretty much the factorials with gamma functions and then k with alpha. And it looks like what we'll get is n factorial. We're going to replace that with gamma of n plus 1. All right, we have n minus k factorial. We're replacing that with a gamma function, but we're going to replace k with alpha. So we get the gamma function of n minus alpha plus 1. And we should still have a power of x, but now x to the n minus alpha. And that is as close as we can get to a nice simple formula for a fractional derivative. Here, a fractional derivative of order alpha, where alpha is between 0 and 1, for a basic power of x, x to the n. Now at this point, let's go ahead and get to a bunch of examples on calculating these fractional derivatives. For our first example, we're going to take a look at a really simple fractional derivative, the half derivative of x. So for our calculation here, the power of x that we're using is 1, that's x to the 1, and the order of the derivative that we're going to calculate, alpha, is 1 half. Now all the work was already done, most of it in the previous video on the gamma function, and we just basically in this video replaced factorials with gamma function values. So at this point, getting to that rather quickly in this video, we just need to plug in values to that formula and then use some basic values for the gamma function. So let's go ahead and replace in that formula up there for the fractional derivative. We're going to get the gamma function of n, 1 plus 1, so the gamma function of 2. And then we divide by the gamma function of n minus alpha plus 1. Now, if you plug in all those values, n is 1, alpha is a half, plus 1, you should end up with the gamma function of 3 halves. All right, and that's going to be times now x to the 1 minus a half power. So we get x to the positive 1 half. All right, so we need two values here, the gamma function of 2, but because we're plugging in a positive integer, where here in that formula, n is 1, the gamma function of 2 is just 1 factorial, which is 1. So we get 1, and then divided by the gamma function of 3 halves, which we have that as square root of pi divided by 2. And since we're dividing by a fraction up there, you can multiply by the reciprocal, and we get as our half derivative of x, 2 divided by square root of pi, 
times x to the one half. Now, that seems maybe too simple. Maybe you think it should be more complicated, but let's go ahead and check with a basic result that we think should be true. Now, if we take the half derivative of x and then take the half derivative of that, one half plus a half gives one. The half derivative of the half derivative should be the first derivative. So let's go ahead and check that. The first derivative of x is one. Let's take this half derivative, calculate the half derivative of that, and see if we get one. Otherwise, there's something incredibly wrong with our basic formula here for a fractional derivative. We might have to redefine it, but let's check. So let's start first with taking the half derivative of the half derivative of x. And what we expect is this should come out to being the first derivative, since a half plus a half is one. All right, now we're gonna fudge this a little bit. We haven't proved that a fractional derivative has all the linear properties like a normal derivative does, but it does. So first let's replace the inside here with the half derivative we just found. So we're gonna find the half derivative of square, uh, two divided by square root of pi times x to the one half. We have a constant multiple, two divided by square root of pi. Like normal derivatives, we can pull constants out front. So I'll write that as two over square root of pi times the half derivative. And be careful here, we're taking the half derivative of now x to the one half power. All right, and just be careful here, the order of our derivative is one half. So here we're using alpha as a half, and the power of x is also a half. All right, so now we repeat our calculation using our basic formula for this fractional derivative, but using n and alpha both as a half. Now we have this factor of two divided by square root of pi out front. So let me just go ahead and carry that down. All right, and if we plug in these values, n as a half, we're gonna get the gamma function of three halves. And then in your denominator, the gamma function of a half minus a half, that cancels out, leaving you with the gamma function of one. All right, and with that formula here, we get now x to the n minus alpha power, x to the one half minus a half, x to the zero. So this looks promising. All right, we just need to replace the values here. We have two divided by square root of pi. The gamma function of three halves, we have that square root of pi over two, which we already used above. All right, and the gamma function of one, just plug in this formula, n as zero, zero factorial is one. So that's dividing by one there, and we have x to the zero, and it looks like here, you can cancel out those factors, and we do get one. In other words, the half derivative of the half derivative gives you the first derivative, which is what we would expect. The first derivative of x should be one. So this indeed does seem to work with how we expect combinations of derivatives to work. Let's go ahead and get to some more examples. For fractional derivatives other than a half derivative, like a one-third derivative or one-fourth derivative, things start to get a little messy. And that's due to the fact that the gamma function of certain values, we really have to resort to numerical approximations. Now, the gamma function of one half we actually have the exact value for that. The gamma function of one half is square root of pi. The gamma function of three halves is also nice, square root of pi divided by two. 
And we actually showed in a previous video on the gamma function that the gamma function of an integer plus a half also comes out proportional to square root of pi. Well, things start to break down when we look at the gamma function of one third. There's not a real nice simple value for that. So we pretty much resort to a numerical approximation from the gamma function's definition as an improper integral. Something like Wolfram alpha will be able to very quickly and easily give you these values. All right, so here notice the gamma function of a third, one fourth, all the way up to one tenth. Those values start to grow. And that's in part why we're not gonna have any nice simple formulas for these examples in this part. All right, let's take a look at some examples nonetheless, as well as some interesting results related to fractional derivatives. Our first example, the half derivative of x, we got the exact value as two divided by square root of pi times x to the one half. And if you approximate that, you get approximately 1.128 as your coefficient times x to the one half. Now, the example below, same function x, but let's calculate a one third derivative. So here, we're gonna have to resort to calculating the gamma function of five thirds, something like, again, Wolfram alpha will be able to give you that. And if you plug all this in, you do get a power of x, x to the one minus a third, x to the two thirds, but your coefficient here, 1.108, it's a little bit less than the coefficient from your half derivative. Now, if we continue this with, let's say, the fractional derivative, where the order alpha is one over a positive integer, so one over k, we get this result, just plugging everything directly into our formula for a fractional derivative. And what we might expect just from these two examples is as the order decreases to zero, so as k gets bigger, one over k, alpha approaches zero, we probably expect this should approach the zeroth derivative, which is just the function. And ignoring any technicalities about limits regarding gamma functions, here notice as k goes to infinity, one over k goes to zero. So here we're gonna get the gamma function of two And then your power here as k approaches infinity, one over k approaches zero. So we get x to the one. And that is indeed the function, the zeroth derivative. We just get x. So this does seem to fit what we would expect from these pattern of a few examples. As we start calculating smaller order fractional derivatives, like a half derivative, a third derivative, a fourth, one over k, where k is a positive integer order derivative, we basically just get closer and closer to our function as if we're calculating no derivatives at all. All right, so that's pretty interesting. Another example for a half derivative, let's say x to the third power and calculating its half derivative. This one, we can get a nice value, but we're gonna need the gamma function of seven halves. So you can plug that in here if you want, use n as three, or check out my previous video on the gamma function where we basically worked this out using the iterative property of the gamma function. And if you plug all this in, using the gamma function of four as three factorial, you do get a power of x, three minus a half, x to the five halves, and you get some nice values here. Just go ahead and flip that, and you'll get exactly 16, divided by five times square root of pi times x to the five halves. And that is your one half derivative of x cubed. All right, so basically from here, fractional derivatives, we can get nice formulas if we're dealing with half derivatives, but basically from any order derivative other than a half derivative, things start to just really require numerical approximations, again, based off your gamma function values. Hope you enjoyed this short and to the point video on fractional derivatives. Check out other videos that I have coming up on fractional derivatives for exponential and trig functions. If you enjoyed the video, support the channel, like and subscribe.